All right, another quick video, this time testing the hall sensors to the motor using either a tool or you just using a multimeter. Either one would work just as well. So really quickly, we'll go down here. On the tool, you wire the phase leads out of the controller into the where it's marked controller, obviously. Same with the uh, hall leads. Coming out to the motor, we do the same thing. Okay, these here are extra leads for testing a uh, pedal assist or a throttle sensor separately. All right, then you turn everything on. So you turn this on, make sure your controller is turned on. Then go over to your motor, grab it, spin it, and you'll see the hall leads light up. Okay, see that? All we're doing is just moving the magnet in front of the hall sensor. And we can do the same thing with our meter with voltage just as easily. It's usually quicker. Um, let's see. Okay, first thing you do, we're just going to pretend like this is plugged into the motor, okay, and that that's the controller. All right, so we plug in our battery negative side into our battery negative lead of the hall switch, which is the black wire, and then we run our positive probe into each lead of the return lines, which are the red, I'm sorry, the blue, yellow, and green. Okay, now we do the same thing. We turn the motor and we're gonna see 3.5 volts each time a sensor gets in front of a magnet. We'll do that with each one. So you're, you can see the multimeter does the exact same thing. This is just doing that. It's just voltage return into this tool. You can do a continuity test once everything's unplugged and you've let it sit um, and you'll get, you should get a different reading between your battery negative and each return as you would get from your battery positive at each return. It's between negative and return, it's like 5 million. Between positive and return, it should be like 25,000. I'm pulling that out of a hat, but it, it's generally something in that in that range. That's not a reliable test. That's only going to tell you continuity, and it only works if your if your meter is good enough to actually read that. If you've got there's multiple reasons why it just isn't going to work. So I don't rely on that. If you're seeing no return on any of those, you're going to have to pop the motor anyway, or you're going to have to check this wiring for continuity in the wiring itself. Okay. In any case, you almost always have to pull the cover, pull the motor out of the windings or out of the windings out of the magnet and take a look at the hall sensors in there. What I see more often than not is that the sensors are still good, but the leads have gotten mushed into each other and they're making contact. And that causes a hard short either between the battery positive and negative or, or say, for example, the battery positive to maybe the yellow. And it just screws everything up. And you'll, you'll, you can kind of know when you have hall sensor issues uh it's it's more difficult if it's a brand new controller that you've just installed onto a bad motor because the controller needs to be programmed anyway but if you have an otherwise functioning system and suddenly you start getting really poor power you're getting you you, you push the throttle and it and it jerks back and forth instead of being smooth on takeoff that's a good indication it's a quick test uh, it's, it's also, but it is critical that when you run any of these tests, whether you're testing the motor, whether you're testing voltage coming out of the controller or testing the throttle, everything else needs to be unplugged except what's required to actually turn the controller on. I, I don't even like to run an LCD display on them. I usually, when possible, I just use a jumper to short it on or I use one of the really simple ones because anything bad in any one of the sensors that's sending bad information down will screw up your five volt reference on all your other. Uh, that's also a good way to actually determine what the problem is. If you've got a suspected bad controller, go and unplug everything, get the power to it, start probing for uh, five volt reference voltage like I showed you in the other video. And if you're seeing it on all your, all your, uh, you know, the throttle lead right here, the red is five volts, your, your pedal assist is showing you five and 4.5. The red and black here is showing you five. Okay. Now start plugging things in. And when you plug in the bad one, 
it's going to throw off all the other ones, especially if it's a short. Um, that that's not the same as an open circuit. Okay, open circuits you're going to have to use the voltmeter. If you had an open circuit on your throttle, you're going to have to use the voltmeter to find it. But that covers motor. Uh, if you want to test the actual motor leads, so the windings themselves, all you're going to do is just stick an ohmmeter across between each two, and you should have almost no resistance because the only thing that's going to happen is either they're open or they're hard shorted together. So if they're hard shorted together, it's going to make smoke. If they're open, it's just not going to operate. If they have super high resistance, that'll show up. So if you had really high resistance, but again, that would make smoke, especially if you put it to full power. So I guess that will about cover it. If you're trying to determine what each one of these connectors do, I think someone asked this in another video, like how do you figure out what, what each one of these do? Well, hopefully you've got instructions. If you don't have instructions, take your meter and probe because it, there's only a couple of different voltages that are ever gonna come out of here. It's either gonna be battery voltage or it's gonna be five volts. So anytime it's a sensing wire, or wire to a for, to, to a throttle to a reverse switch to a speed control switch it's going to be a five volt source so if you're probing through these wires you got a mess like this this is not going to be this is not likely to be control wires red two yellows a black this has got to have something to do with with lights or some specific function of this controller but when you've got these little three wire guys here and you, you know, I, we already know this, what this is. This is going to be our pedal assist. 4.7, that's our reference. 5 volt, that's our return. We go over here. What else do we got on here that we can look at? I'm not sure what functions this controller has. So here's a little two wire, the black and brown. It, black and brown in so many controllers has been reverse. So yeah, 5 volts and battery negative. Chances are that's gonna be reverse. So at this point, knowing that it's only a five volt signal, it's safe to short it to ground because it's a functional switch. You get everything wired up, you've got it ready to run, run. you've got your throttle hooked up, get you, make you a little jumper with a fuse, with a super low amperage fuse. So this is like, I think a two amp, but you could even run like a half amp fuse if you're really worried about it. Um, on this one, obviously, we need a much smaller set of terminals, but we turn it on, okay, we plug this in, we twist the throttle, what happens? Does it go in reverse? Does it go really fast or does it not go? So if it goes really fast, it's speed control. If it goes in reverse, it's forward reverse. If it doesn't go, it's a brake. It's a brake switch. So brake switches also most of the time operate on five volts. For example, I know this to be brake switch because the two connectors being wired together like that on a bicycle controller that's how they always are and it will be five volts okay i've lost my battery negative there we go so five volts so you just would go through your pins and see what your what's coming out of them something like this something like this is going to be power probably power for a, a dc to dc converter and we can go in there and look and we've got battery voltage so obviously don't short that that's not a that's not going to be a controller these four pin red ones will have a battery voltage on one leg where is it there yeah i think this is like key lock and this is just to operate an alarm so this one here what do we got on this one that most likely is going to be battery negative we've got 0.4 volts nothing and battery voltage you know I, I would suspect something like this right here could be a brake like a brake light yellow green could be like a brake light so to test this we would want to do we'd want to plug that into a brake switch and or or just short it why don't we do that let's see if i can i don't know if i can right here so if we short this and that lights up, then we'll know. Yeah, look at that. Spot on. 
So that, what happens is when you push your brakes and it closes, it sends power back down this yellow green. And the reason I suspect that is because I've seen yellow green as brake light wiring so many times on different controllers. It seems to be a common theme. I'm not sure the yellow, the yellow could be a similar, it, it could, or it could be, I don't think it's gonna be the ground of that. I'm trying to think what would that yellow one be doing? It could be, that could be a headlight wire not doing anything there so it, that could be like a headlight wire um, this could be providing power to a switch that operates headlights and when you switch it that's going to send battery voltage back down that yellow this is undoubtedly battery negative so yeah it's just a matter of trial and error like that you're going to probe them you're going to look at what the voltage is there's some common themes in wiring and I think that's just experience that you'll run across where you know, you know how to figure out what that is. This one here, like I said, I don't have any idea. It's got battery and ground. I'm not sure what it is. I'll have to look. I do have instructions for this so I can actually look it up, but it's really common to buy controllers that look like this and get no information. I bought one the other day and it was a lot simpler than this, okay? It did have an alarm, but it was a lot simpler. The plugs were a lot more obvious, and it didn't take me but a few minutes to figure out reverse, forward. Um, it was interesting because one of their plugs was actually orange, and that was for reverse, and I've never seen that. I think that's about all I've got on this. I will say for the last time, when you do these tests on your controllers and on each individual uh, whether it's a Hall effect sensor, well, they're all Hall sensors, really, unless you've got potentiometer throttle. They're all. Make sure that each one is unplugged before testing your reference voltage. Make sure you test them for continuity indiv individually. You know, don't do it when it's plugged into things, okay? And if you do get one of these, they're really handy, but you still have to know what you're looking at when you use it. So, one more time, there you go motor windings work now if you have the motor wired to actually operate and you spin it you can you can just plug in this side and you'll see these guys light up for you all right guys that's all i got for you